Dear colleagues, uh, thank you for coming, uh, dear organizer. Thank you for the invitation to this perfect event. Uh, my name is uh, Sergei Kardinchik, I know I try to pronounce it good morning. Uh, I'm very Russian, living here in uh, UAE, uh, also giving lectures in uh, Harvard Space uh, University in Spain. And uh, for a long time I do cybersecurity professionally and also as a hobby. I work in different companies like Aspersky Lab, Positive Technologies, etc. One of my hobbies is to Industrial uh, control system security, so uh, create a cyber physical disaster. And you can see the demonstration of what a cyber physical attack on this uh, short video. Uh, important disclaimer this is my personal talk, not about my job, no, no, nothing related to my employees. Uh, before the beginning, I would like to tell you a story. It was several years ago, like five years ago. Uh, I did the penetration testing a lot and uh, we got a customer who asked us to do security assessment of the AI powered CCTV system. So it was like, very fresh and very scary because we have zero clue about what is AI by its CCTV system. We call this project Big Bravo CCTV and start like an uh, initial discovery and we found a cool thing and versatile example. Well, um, uh, Alex already told about this. Uh, so what is a versatile example is if it, you can change the input to fool the classifier. Yeah, so if the classifier believes this is banana, you can add sticker and classifier will believe that this actually toast. Yeah? And part of our team, we start discovering how to build these uh, adversarial examples for the uh, video system, how to uh, create uh, additional images view, which will spoof the uh, classification, as you can see in this uh, video, uh, the guy who has a special image on his body, he is not a person, he is an invisible man. And uh, if he will transfer this picture to his body, the body also becomes an invisible man. So it's, it's good, it's fresh. Uh, let's say that, like, if he, oh, now he's a person, yeah. And uh, part of our team started to do this research to understand how to build other side examples for video. But other part, like, let's say, old school hackers. Uh, say, okay, let's be professional. We should analyze all threat models starting from physical security. And we started from physical security. We took a credit card and uh, able to get access to one of facilities where this system is installed. And we found that actually several CCTV cameras, which are IP cameras, uh, have very big, let's say, physical security. So we can cut the cable, connect to RG45 and get access to IP network and next actually hack everything because everyone thought that this should be secure because it's in a dedicated building, you know. And uh, what I want to highlight with this beginning, but AI and AI security is not spherical code traveling in vacuum. Still all the problems we have in the cyber are there, but now we have additional layer to protect. Uh, let's try to discuss. First, let's discuss what is cyber in general, yeah? Everyone here professional, all we know what is holy CI trinity, confidentiality, integrity, reliability, and this is our goal to uh, make the system which follow this CI baseline. But uh, you know, uh, in the previous slide, uh, I used to work a lot on the uh, industrial cyber security, and in the 2020, something like this, uh, it was a big discussion about that CIA does not work for the industrial control system. We should rebuild it, and uh, actually the availability is the key. So confidentiality is not that important, and maybe not important at all, but industrial process and its uh, availability is critically important. And it's also in standards for, for, for instance, for smart grid. But now we have new discussion. But for artificial intelligence, the integrity is the key. So, uh, is the key, is the key, it's very important. So, if we do AI uh, backing system, we should spend a lot of time trying to uh, understand how to build uh, 
integrity. Uh, it's funny approach, you know, it looks like you, you're trying to have this uh, uh, free uh, items and move it upside down and uh, believe that it's magically give you a result. But I believe that there are like some uh, laws, for instance, law of physics, and if you uh, just uh, move in things and try to rebuild the, um, I don't know, order, it will give you zero results uh, on this uh, picture. I really like uh, this definition of cyber uh, from uh, James Mackens. Uh, he gave a perfect uh, keynote address in the Usenex Security Symposium, and his definition is that what is the goal of cybersecurity? It's ensuring that systems do the right things even in the uh, presence of malicious input. It's clear, defined definition, and I like it before uh, because um, in one of my research for industrial cybersecurity, I gave quite sim I gave some quite similar definition. But uh, cybersecurity is a process to ensure that contra objects operate with no dangerous failures. Uh, with economic efficiency and reliability under adversarial anthropogenic information influence. So, uh, the difference with this, uh, the uh, input is from the human, yeah, because human actually are smarter than just uh, random noise. And for, to protect from random noise, you can use, like, I don't know, codex or something like this. To protect against humans, you should use human only. And uh, what is the dangerous failures, economic efficiency and uh, reliability if we discuss it, uh, uh, artificial intelligence? I will give you one example. I'm sorry. No. Uh, can you uh, start from the beginning? Is it possible? No, for, for, for this video. Yeah. Just play it. Sorry. Computers. Can you repeat it from the beginning? In this video, you can find it on the uh, YouTube, I'll drop you the link. The robot after some... Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, play, play, this play button. Yeah, the beginning. Hey, so... So, uh, in, the, in this video... Uh, okay, okay. This is definitely AI security, yeah. But where is malicious input being a part of a call or our, our traditional attacks? It's just a situation, yeah, where uh, this Android became insane. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, how to approach uh, such kind of problems? We should uh, build a threat model first. What uh, we have from the AI threat models is a very good definition from the uh, a pro a Professor Lee, uh, he have rigor of the AI security in the threat model. First is uh, data integrity, next is model security, and next is implementation security. Uh, this approach is very good for research purposes, but when you try to build security system, you uh, need uh, more details, uh, because it doesn't uh, take into account a lot of things which also important for the real system, like the cloud environment, uh, privacy, IP protection, such complex things like federative loading, which now is very popular. And <coughs> I found very good definition, uh, a very good uh, uh, threat model from the NCC group. Uh, sorry for this uh, uh, quality of the picture. Uh, you can find it by the link. And also this model, threat model, is in the uh, Microsoft uh, Fred modeling tool, so you can download it, uh, take it offline, and uh, do a model of your uh, AI process to understand how this, uh, uh, how security can impact. It's a very good starting reference. Uh, 
but first thing is the cloud. Anyway, uh, most of the uh, AI application now built in the cloud, work in the cloud, and we should secure the cloud first. Uh, one of the interesting things uh, related to cloud security. Uh, first is the new, uh, new, let's say, type of network is an infinity, infinity band and software defined network, which now actually everywhere in the cloud. Uh, next is security of machine learning and GPU servers, because it's like new things and deployed everywhere. And for sure, virtualization and containers. Uh, let's review state of the art of this uh, of security of these things. For instance, for software defined network and SD1, uh, uh, it's a lot of discussion in the media, which is such a new magic thing which will help you to build more secure AI powered network. But uh, if you will do a detailed security assessment of, of such a uh, system, uh, actually you will find that this, in most cases, is just a Linux uh, with an old kernel with a lot of hard codes and uh, thousands of vulnerabilities. Uh, for the last two years, we did a uh, um, SD1 New Hope uh, project, uh, and we did analysis of the different uh, software defined network system, and we found that most of the vendors failed to create ba as basic security in their software defined uh, uh, applications and devices which should protect our data center. You can see that uh, red uh, crosses is actually vulnerabilities discovered during our assessment. Uh, next big, big thing is security of the um, uh, servers, of the uh, machine learning servers. And uh, now the big thing in the server security is uh, security of the out-of-band management interfaces like BMC, IPMI, uh, UFI, etc. Uh, a lot of good research is published uh, so far. And uh, uh, following this research, we decide is it possible to find a machine learning server connected to the internet. Uh, we tried to find this something during the using Shodan or other search engine, and we found one uh, which uh, had a web server on the uh, port 5555. And uh, after uh, some additional research, we found that this actually uh, server which used to uh, mine bitcoins. In 2019, when guys using GPGPU to mine the coins, very funny because it's actually useless. You will consume more power when uh, get uh, revenue. Uh, but still, we continue our research, and we found that there are a lot of uh, uh, servers uh, which are available for, uh, via internet uh, and uh, through the SNMP. You can find the details about the servers, and we found, for instance. DGX1. Uh, anyone here know what is DGX1? DGX1 is like a small box which uh, cost uh, 130,000 USD, which have eight um, uh, uh, Tesla uh, U100 uh, on board and which use it to do machine learning. So it's very expensive, uh, expensive thing and uh, you cannot use it to play a game actually. Yeah, you do use it, use it only for machine learning. And um, uh, we continue our research and we found a lot of ways how to find the uh, other uh, DJX server, including DJX2, which actually cost 400,000. And uh, what's interesting, this interface which we found, this is a uh, DJX based board management controller, so this is BMC, this out of band management interface. If you can hack it, you will hack actually all the uh, operation system, everything on the top, because it's like uh, level minus one, yeah, so it's start before the kernel is loaded. And also we found that's very funny things. I think that uh, uh, this BMC is based on QCD uh, baseboard management controller, which uh, actually uh, part of, uh, based on the uh, mega rack uh, by American mega train. So, uh, uh, mega train, sorry. So, uh, actually, when we start to communicate with the video, they even did not understand who built this PMC for them. They just bought it cheap and apply on this board. Uh, 
Second story about uh, very old vulnerability. Uh, we did security assessment of the cloud data center and we found that all BMC have vulnerability uh, from uh, 2030. It's a very old vulnerability which allow you to uh, receive hashes uh, from the BMC. You send specific requests and you get all hashes of all users where and you can offline brute force it. Uh, we send requests to the vendor and ask them, guys, why you have vulnerability in 2019? They told, this is not our vulnerability. This vulnerability by design of the uh, IPMI protocol. So, uh, okay, uh, we ask them what to do to protect our servers, uh, uh, to make it secure against this vulnerability. They told us, uh, use complex passwords. But I still cannot understand how the complex password will help me if an attacker can ask for password hash from the my system and he have, can have unlimited resources to put the forces of home offline. Uh, maybe there are additional bugs there, but we're still in the process of the responsible uh, disclosure, so we will release uh, our finding uh, maybe in December on the Congress. Let's see. Uh, another interesting thing is uh, that the GPU is actually new CPU. It was a lot of research around the vulnerabilities of modern uh, uh, CPUs like Spectre or other attacks, but there are very few research about GPU vulnerabilities. Uh, very old GPU rootkit, which actually initially was presented in 2008, and uh, uh, was uh, Jellyfish was re renewed in 2015, and I found one additional research about the side channel attack, uh, because in most cases, if you do uh, machine learning, GPU is very expensive resource, and this is shared research between different, uh, for instance, dockers. Yeah, and if you can. Uh, for, uh, and you can leak part of memory from one doctor to other. So this idea. But also, uh, we start our research uh, in this area, and we found that some of the uh, modern uh, CPU attacks can be used against GPU. For instance, row hammer, uh, which uh, allow you to change the memory uh, using the read uh, instruction. Uh, can be triggered on the GPUs. Here's an example. It's not like a proof of concept. Uh, it's just a, a proof of uh, of we can do it because we able to trigger um, uh, ECC uh, uh, first. So reading mem by me reading memory of the GPU, we, we actually can overwrite part of the memory. But we cannot execute code yet. Uh, next the big thing in the data center is Docker's. Uh, Docker secure, uh, Docker's now everywhere. And the uh, problem with Docker is that uh, no one cares uh, what we have inside of this Docker. We just pull it from the internet and run. Uh, here's an example of the uh, vulnerability in um, a Linux Docker in image, uh, which uh, had the uh, uh, empty root password by default. And this vulnerability was found in 2015, fixed it, and next we period in uh, 2019 again. So, and people just download this Docker launch it, no problem. Uh, also, a very good uh, uh, project is uh, vulnerable containers.org. And uh, if you will go to this uh, project and check uh, security of uh, uh, default containers, for instance, uh, container for TensorFlow, you will find that TensorFlow container official have 12 known vulnerabilities. Just by default, you download it, you have 12 unpatched vulnerabilities, and you should care about it, you should patch it. But who patched the uh, Docker images? Actually, no one, because it's something help patch, you know. Uh, and next thing is serv uh, serverless uh, security. I don't want to uh, go into details uh, here, but uh, serverless Lambda functions is very popular in the application development for the machine learning, and it has all specific vulnerabilities. Uh, very uh, good research in this area done by Pursec.io. You can find it. Uh, there is also a uh, tested application. You can try, hack, play around, etc. Uh, next big uh, component of the uh, machine learning is uh, machine learning frameworks. 
Uh, machine learning frameworks is cool thing. It help us to uh, uh, build an AI application very quick because we does not care about the data process, about how to all mathematics behind. Actually, you can just use built-in block to create your AI model. But uh, the problem with uh, uh, machine learning framework, but most of the machine learning framework are very complex application. Uh, here you can see what the uh, number of line of code and external packages in Cafe, TensorFlow, and PyTorch. Uh, you can see that it's very big, and it was a uh, very good research by Ken Lee, who published the way how to by sending uh, image to the machine learning framework, uh, create remote code execution on inside this framework. And this is just because of the, uh, I guess, uh, JF file parser or something like this, so just uh, obvious uh, memory management error. But now the industry moved from the framework to the pipelines. Uh, here is an example, NVIDIA Clara platform, which are uh, machine learning pipelines uh, by NVIDIA and this create uh, and help you to build the, uh, everything, starting from the data annotation, next to the uh, model training, next to the uh, infinite server, so, and even visualization, yeah, so it's like ready to run platform. And uh, what's interesting uh, in such uh, kind of application, but actually this is Frankenstein. So, for instance, uh, NVIDIA Clara platform, uh, it's built on the top of the open source uh, components like DC and DK and uh, Orphanc, uh, uh, Dicom server or PAX system, and all these components uh, have own security weaknesses. But people who build this uh, way don't care. Uh, you can say well, here, but if you want to have a, a PAX server, just pull the Docker container from the internet. Uh, we did some research uh, of, of security of uh, such components, and we found that actually there are thousands of vulnerabilities there. Uh, and uh, here is the public uh, information about fixed vulnerabilities in uh, medical image processing uh, libraries. As you can see, one of vulnerability allow you uh, to get the content of EDC pass with the file. So you send the type of image. It's processed by the uh, your pack system, and on the output you have not only image but also content of your ETC password. Um, next interesting thing is a uh, uh, new languages. Uh, Alexander his talk already told that okay we have a uh, semantic uh, uh, based languages which like Python, C plus plus etc. And we have machine learning models. For instance. Uh, TensorFlow have own linear model which called graph files, but these graph files have ability to access to file system to uh, make a network communication and even store additional process. But actually, no one care about security of the machine learning model. It's again, it's just uploaded from the internet and run it on the inference server. But it's easy to fix it in the way, like say, traditional malware way. And if you can do it, uh, you will have invisible malware because no antivirus at the moment process uh, machine learning uh, model files. Uh, is it real? Uh, we did some research, but again, it's in uh, responsible disclosure process. Uh, we will release uh, this information after. Uh, being a product management pro uh, professional, I spent a lot of uh, time to understand the data which uh, are applicable for this specific uh, uh, application intelligence uh, uh, system. And I can give you an example. Let's imagine that you going to build the system which will apply a computer vision to satellite images. And you want to cover all the Earth uh, in near real time. Uh, what's the problem you will need? First, is the amount of data. Because uh, to cover all the Earth in near real time, let's say one satellite image per minute, you need one petabyte of, st of storage. Next. Uh, different satellites flying on different topics. So this information will come to you as a way. Sometimes we have cloud, sometimes we have 
uh, different angle of the shooting of footage, and you should combine with all information, store it somewhere, and process. Again, uh, most of traditional security things will doesn't work uh, on the top of this huge amount of data because again, any antivirus which can process one petabyte of data daily, any hashing algorithm you can use to, for, to uh, create, I don't know, uh, integrity list of this data, how you will check that this data actually came from satellite, but not from the back camera. It's very hard task just to manage this data. But there are uh, also additional things like the uh, privacy of the data collection, especially if we deal with uh, personal information like images, uh, payment information, uh, data integrity, training cycle and model integrity, and protection of our IP. It's also uh, was discussed before. Uh, about uh, IP protection, you know the machine learning model is very expensive toy. If you did the, for instance, medical images, uh, imaging uh, model, uh, you can spend several millions uh, to make, I don't know, a lung cancer detection model. But next, you should ship it to customer. And customer actually sometimes can steal it and use it as own model. How do you protect our model in this case? Uh, there are thousands of uh, ways to attack our model. Uh, it's a very good uh, scientific and practical research of using uh, a black box attacks, for instance, by cre creating student model. So you send in a lot of examples. Next, understand how the model works and create all model which uh, works uh, as similar as a uh, teacher model. But in practical implementation, uh, 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 at least in my experience, and in most cases, uh, you can use Bingo, grab and strings to extract the model because in most cases, IP is not protected at all. And if the model uses TensorFlow, you can just find the uh, TensorFlow API calls and you will understand that this Python file, this actually is a model. I don't know how it works and I don't care because if I drop the image inside, I will receive my uh, results and I can use it as a black box. Uh, the uh, next problem I want to discuss is how the AI works. And the biggest problem here is nobody knows. Uh, here's another here's an example. This one is learned to look for printed text in a variety of sizes, colors, and fonts. This is pretty cool, because we never asked the network to look for wrinkles or text or faces. The only wrinkles we provided were the very last thing, so the only reason the network learned features like text and faces in the middle was to support final decisions at that last layer. For example, the text detector may provide good evidence that a rectangle is in fact a book seen on edge, and detecting many books next to each other might be a good way of detecting a bookcase, which was one of the categories we trained in next pregnant. So, uh, this uh, video about um, uh, object detection, uh, uh, conventional neural network, and next guy tried to understand how this network works, and they did this visualization framework which uh, uh, show you how the different uh, neuron activates uh, during the image process. And what they found, but this system can detect printed text. But they never train the system to detect printed uh, text. They only show them books, shelves, etc. But by some reason, neural network decide that it's very good to think to detect printed text. Next, it can be used to classification of the uh, uh, bookshelves or books by itself. So the, 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 uh, the highlight from here, but actually guys who build the machine learning uh, models, they don't understand what is inside. They, they just pull out information and believe that if uh, ROC and uh, AUC is good, this is enough. Uh, and here is a practical research uh, of the uh, memorization of the net neural network. Uh, it was uh, 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 the team. Uh, by request of Google, the idea was to uh, check 
how uh, much information you can extract from the neural network. For instance, we uh, use a Spark filter as a reference example and use a lot of email to train this model. And let's try to extract the critical information like the uh, social security numbers, PIN, PIN numbers, etc. A small amount of information from, the, from this model. And I found, yeah, it's possible. Not always, because the model actually is smaller than one training data set, but sometimes it's possible. Uh, also, it's a very interesting research, uh, which I think uh, should be, uh, uh, can be applied to security. I don't know how, but I believe it can be. Uh, it's a research which can extract small uh, part of the neural network. So you have, uh, for instance, the neural network with thousands of layers, and next you can try to find the part of this neural network which is responsible, for instance, for the printed text detection on the previous example, yeah? So it's not necessary to have thousands of layers, it can be 10 layers which detects only printed text. 10 layers which detects, I don't know, faces. 10 layers which detect uh, is a cat or a dog. And you can extract part of this neural network and use it as dedicated neural networks. So, again, we build something, we build a big black box, which called like AI, and now we try to understand how it works. It's absolutely insane for me as an engineer, because like uh, being actually a railway engineer in the past, I believe I understand how this thing works. Now we don't. Uh, adversarial examples, yeah, it's uh, was discussed a uh, thousand of times. Uh, it's really booming right now. A lot of people doing research in this area. Uh, how to spoof a computer vision algorithm, how to uh, using uh, printing glasses uh, become uh, John Malkovich forever, yeah, because on the, with the image you can see if you, some, some of algorithm if you use uh, with specific glasses, uh, will detect you as Mr. Malkovich. Uh, but um, also, I believe that adversarial examples are forever. This very good example, uh, I took it from the uh, MIT lectures, uh, about uh, clever hands. Uh, clever hands is a horse, actually, and uh, in the beginning of nine, uh, uh, 19th, uh, 20th century, uh, it was a like, show that the uh, uh, owner of this horse uh, thought, okay, this, uh, my uh, horse can do math. So you can like, ask, how many is 2 plus 5? And then the horse starts knocking, and when it reaches 7, it stops. And everybody, wow, cool, yeah, so it can do math. Uh, but actually, the horse is very smart, it's just looking at the people. And when the, uh, they reach the 7, the people say, stop or not. Yet. And the uh, uh, horse understood and stopped. So, horse want to find something in our reaction. Actually, the neural network also want to find something in our reaction. Here's a, a white noise. And this white noise was uh, classified by the uh, Cypher uh, 10 classifier. And uh, you can see that in pink box, uh, pink box uh, the classifier able to change something. For instance, it's a, oh, this is cat, this is dog, this is something. And uh, in yellow box, it uh, require only uh, uh, one stage of the adversarial training to uh, find the airplane layer. So, neural network does not fix things and see what uh, we want from this network to see. And this is important, especially if you try to apply it to security. Uh, here's additional example. It's a real, real life adversarial example. 